Thank you. Well, um, welcome. We're glad to have you. It is another great day in South Carolina. You know, if you look at the three of us, you see the diversity of America. You see the diversity of South Carolina, but you see a lot of common ground. What I am proud to say is that with these two gentlemen, we know that we are going to continue to lead South Carolina in a path to success. And we're going to do it by what we fought for and what we continue to do. And that is by making sure our business environment in the state is good, by making sure we continue to fight the things in D.C. that hurt us, that are causing businesses not to do well, whether it's uh, regulations like the EPA, whether it's the National Labor Relations Board and the unions, or whether it's anything the Obama administration continues to mandate down to our state. I've got two great rock stars here that are ready to fight. We fight for our businesses, we fight for our people, but we fight for quality of life in South Carolina. And you've heard us brag about jobs, that we've announced over 49,000 jobs in 45 out of 46 counties. But you've also saw us do something amazing this week, which is say that those jobs don't mean anything if, it's, if our kids aren't the ones taking those jobs. So you've seen us pass strong education initiatives this week to carry that forward. What we are here to say today is we stand proud of South Carolina. We stand, stand committed to the fight and the work that we're going to do for the people of this state. And we do it proudly and we do it humbly and we do it in a way that we know that whatever the Obama administration hands down, whatever challenges come in our way, we will stand as Team South Carolina and fight for what we believe in and fight in a way that makes everybody proud. So with that, I will now turn it over to our senior senator, Lindsey Graham. <laughs> thank you. Well, uh, to Matt Moore, where you at, Matt? I think you're the youngest party chairman in the country, is that right? Uh, the Republican Party is on the move in South Carolina in a way that I haven't seen before. It's an exciting time to be a Republican. Um, we are diverse, Afri first African-American senator, uh, I guess since ever. <laughs> Great female governor, Indian American descent, and the little short white guy that gets all the grief. <laughs> so uh, at the end of the day, uh, our party in South Carolina has decided to serve people rather than just be blind ideologues. Conservatism serves people. Liberal or conservative ideology that can't see people doesn't do anybody any good. Tim sees people. I'm so excited about being Tim's partner. 90% is pretty good. I couldn't get that in my own family. <laughs> but Tim is going to break ground on education in Washington and try to empower the least among us with a better education. And the governor will be his partner here. I'm going to try to push the party to solve hard problems like immigration in a way that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past, but I'm going to be strong voice for national security and fixing problems like ports. I've uh, had the pleasure to serve with several governors. I have never met anybody more enthusiastic about job creation uh, than Governor Haley. She gets it. She is always calling Tim and myself, will you make a phone call? I think we can get them. Will you go wherever you need to go? I think we can get them. How are we doing on the port? She led the effort to put $300 million aside, the state's matching portion uh, to deepen the port is in the bank, and we're the only state in the nation has put the money aside. So in Governor Haley, We've got a great role model for conservatives all over the country. In Tim Scott, we have the future of conservatism all over the country. And Lindsey Graham, you got a guy trying really hard to get it right as I see it. The one thing that the three of us have to offer the people of South Carolina is that we really are trying to leave behind a better state, stronger than we found it, and it's not about us. It's about the people of South Carolina. And Tim has made history in so many different ways. But the thing that 
people should never ignore about Tim Scott is his heart. He is one of the nicest people I've ever met in any walk of life, and he will represent South Carolina and the United States Senate in an unbelievable fashion because everybody in the Senate loves Tim Scott. Thank you, Lizzie. Well, good morning to everyone. I tell you, this is a fantastic day for South Carolina. I think about Team South Carolina as you see us standing here today and what we represent. I think what we represent most is the future. Not because of any of us, but we represent the future because our focus really is on how do we make America better for the next generation. We've all been blessed with success, but the fact of the matter is that none of us got here on our own. I think about my work with Governor Haley when we were both in the State House. She was fighting then to change the formula for funding education. I remember one of the debates we had on the floor about moving it from the South Carolina average around 42 or 44% up to 65% to match the national average. That change would have meant another billion dollars in classrooms for kids who are in the most vulnerable places in South Carolina. She didn't stop there when she became governor. She continued to work towards improving education for the least of those. As a kid growing up in a single parent household, I think back to the struggles of my mom, trying to make sure that I had the best chance at the best education because she taught me that education is in fact the gateway to the American dream. To have a governor who's working day and night to make sure that kids all across South Carolina benefit from an education system that is designed for kids, not for unions, not for anyone else, but a child-centric education system is a wonderful opportunity for the next generation of South Carolinians. Lindsay, who, Senator Graham, who, who's, uh, I think you had 23 opponents or 24? Uh, it's, it's still the jury's out. The jury's still out. Still decide. 23 or 24 opponents that <laughs> end up with 57% of the, the vote in the primary. It speaks volumes for the voters who are paying attention to the candidates that they're choosing. One of the beauties of, of Senator Graham is that as we see America at the epicenter of international uh, engagement, there's no doubt that our best friend, the person who has the most personal experience, who puts on the uniform and fights for this nation, is Lindsey Graham. We find ourselves in a position where we can celebrate the success of the voters who chose to send Lindsey back because we all understand that as the if you're looking for a, a tenacious bulldog who will fight this president on his decisions on military issues, you can find no better friend to our military than Lindsey Graham. If you're thinking about the, the issues of Obamacare, you think about the impact of expanding Medicaid in our, in our state and the impact long term on our taxpayers and the impact on the quality of health care, you look to my left the one who's defending us, and you look to the right, the one who's giving us an opportunity to opt out of Obamacare. You find very quickly a very simple theme here today. The theme is that we are focused on the people. Everyday folks, just like me, working hard jobs throughout our state, looking for hope and opportunity in the right places. The good news is we know that that hope and opportunity does not come from the government. It comes from private sector folks, creating jobs, making changes. It comes from single moms, like Francis Scott, my mom, working two, two jobs, 16 hours a day, coming home, providing discipline. If we can take the message of open opportunity, individual responsibility, and a free market, I believe that we have the secret sauce to see not just 49,000 jobs in the next term under Governor Haley, but maybe 75,000. Can you do 100,000 jobs? We will try. Make it 100, 100, 100, 100. 100,000 new jobs in the next four years. Thank you all so much. Governor. Thank you. And so what you see is we stand united, but we stand united fighting for the same things. We stand united fighting for the people of this state to create more jobs, to allow more education for the children that really need it. But we do it also looking at the fact we all have opponents that are doing the exact opposite. They fight to raise taxes. They fight to support unions. They fight to help trial lawyers. They fight to increase regulations, and they all support Obamacare. 
We all stand here saying we're ready to fight against Obamacare. We're ready to fight against anything that is going to change the climate of South Carolina that doesn't improve it in a good way. And so with that, it's a pleasure to stand next to um, two great leaders in our state. And we stand here as Team South Carolina ready to get to work.